Okay, guys, now we have section four, and uh, most of the time in section four, you will get one word only, right? But sometimes, because you know, they have some old listening tests, some recent tests, and all that, and they play any test. You don't know the test you get in your actual exam that was created in 2000 or maybe 2005 or 2010. And then uh, IELTS is same. Ever since they started, IELTS is same. But only the patterns, they are different. What are the patterns? In part one, nowadays, mostly they give one word only. One word and or a number. That's a pattern. But if in part one they give you multiple choice, that is old pattern. Still part of IELTS, but that is old pattern. Sometimes in part one, <clears throat> they give you no more than three words. So even that is pattern of the test. But uh, all the patterns they give, we are practicing, these are the patterns, right? So in part four, most of the time they give you one word only. But sometimes it can be <coughs> multiple choice, sometimes no more than three words. So you should be ready for everything. Now, let's see. First of all, complete the table below. Questions 31 to 40. Complete the table below. Write no more than two words for each answer. Now, I need your full attention once again because multiple choice is gone. Section 3 can be confusing. I understand. IELTS listening, part 3 can be confusing. Why? Because there are multiple choice questions, matching type of questions, due to which it can be confusing. But part 1 and part 4, I mean, what you lost in part 3, now you can get again in part 4. So you should pay full attention to part four and within 15 to 20 minutes, you'll be crystal clear about it. Okay, questions 31 to uh, 40, complete the table below. Write no more than two words for each answer. <coughs> Have they mentioned any number? No. Okay, now first I would like to give you techniques to read the questions. For part four, they will give you one minute to read all the questions 31 to 40. And most of the time, students complain that part four audio is very fast. It's not fast. Audio is fluent. Audio is unstoppable. It goes on and on and on and on. And there is no break in the middle. So students uh, take it as very fast audio. And sometimes they say 1.25. In IELTS, they never do 1.2. But you understand 1.25? It's going, it's running fast and all that. So it's not like that. <coughs> okay, how to read the questions? First of all, you guys can see there is a table and there are four columns. First column, uh, the topic is exotic pests. Now, if you don't know what is exotic, you know the pest from the word pesticide, right? Pest and pesticide, okay? And uh, in part four, there is always a part of a lecture, part of a lecture. And how many people talk uh, in part four? Just one. In part four, there'll be just one person. Part one, how many people talk? Two. Part two, two people. Two. Part two, usually two. And part three, there can be three or four, right? <coughs> so let's see. Now, I want you to just underline the word Australia, right? Underline the word spider. And you will do this very, very quickly. Spider, then underline the word Japan, and then you read 31. Before that, you did not read anything. You just underlined so that you could catch the audio. In part four, catching the audio is very, very important. Otherwise, you will be behind. Audio is going to be ahead of you. Or sometimes in confusion, you are ahead of the audio. So you should be careful by underlining these words. For example, in the audio when they say spider, I know they have reached here. And one of my fingers, this hand is my writing hand. Okay, writing hand will write. This is my pointing finger. My pointing finger will be moving with the audio. When they say Australia, my finger will come here. One hand is here. When they say red-backed spider, my finger is going to be here. When they say Japan, I'm going to move this finger with the audio so that this finger will help me track the audio and this hand will write the answers. So you must use both hands. <coughs> okay. Even on island, in middle of, underline the word middle of. In the middle of. For middle, they might use the word center or they just use the word in the middle of. Now just listen to the audio. This finger will go on with the audio and wait for the word in the middle of, in the center of, in the mid of. Whatever they say, 
after in the middle of after in the center of after in the mid of or after between between also means the middle of right so that is going to be your answer and remember no more than two words what does that mean two words maximum minimum one word and there is no number at all now please listen and do it you will hear part of a lecture about exotic pests given as the introduction to a course on ecology and environment good afternoon i want this afternoon as an introduction to our ecology module to offer examples of exotic pests non native animals or plants which are or may be causing problems which might prove a fruitful topic for seminar papers later in the term people and products are crisscrossing the world as never before and on these new global highways plants and animals are travelling too exotic plants and animals are turning up in antarctica and on the most remote islands on earth for example the australian red-backed spider it's made its way to countries fairly near home such as new zealand and japan as some of you may know well it's also been found on tristan da cunha which is a remote island thousands of miles from anywhere way out in the middle of the atlantic in the middle of the atlantic now did you move this finger with the audio see it is so comfortable you know i'm coming closer 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 initial part of the audio was ba 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 means it was not related to the question but when he said for example australia then you reach there and then you moved on and on and on and this hand knows when they come together you have to write the answer so the answer is atlantic so atlantic should have the correct spelling right agar nahi aa rahe honge to kisi se pooch lijiyega invigilator ko bula ke pooch liyega paijan atlantic ke spelling batayenge baad mein pata kya hoga jab aapka sab ka result aa jayega aapka result hoga delayed uske 3 hafton ke baad hoga test cancelled फिर आप कहेंगे पता नहीं हुआ क्या सो नेवर डू एनी थिंग रॉन्ग इन आईल्स एग्जाम नेवर आस नेवर फील दैट ओके नो वन इज लुकिंग आई कैन चीट राइट बी केयरफुल क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी टू इंग्लैंड रेबिट ऑस्ट्रेलिया यू विल नॉट रीड इट जस्ट अंडर लाइन इंग्लैंड रेबिट ऑस्ट्रेलिया नाउ यू विल रीड एट हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो इम्पोर्टेड इन टू इंग्लैंड टू बी यूज फॉर Now, eight hundred years ago, that rabbit was imported into England to be used for. Now, please underline the word "to be used for," and for "to be used for," they might use the word "source of." Source of means to be used for, right? Now, rabbit was brought to Australia to use as a what? Pet animal to be used for source of pet animal or anything like that. Listen. Now another famous animal invader in the other direction so to speak from England to Australia in the southern hemisphere is the rabbit This was in 1830 and it might seem less of a threat but it became an extraordinarily destructive pest The fact that rabbits increased so rapidly is perhaps more understandable when we remind ourselves that they had originally been introduced to England from continental Europe 8 centuries earlier. This was because they were regarded as a luxury food source and in spite of having warm fur they probably originated on the hot dry plains of Spain. Luxury food source. So what will be the answer? uh okay now see source is the word for to be used for so the answer is going to be either luxury food right or you can write food source used for food source but actually source is the word for used so it's better to write luxury food or only food is also the right answer uh whenever you check your answers which are given at the end of the book the words which are written in bracket these words are optional if you write them okay even if you don't write them your answers are correct so did you notice one thing for 8 years ago 8 centuries exactly 8 centuries or before 8 centuries like that so 32 is food <clears throat> now question number 33 this is in new habitat and habitat means place for living for animal species where animals live we call them their habitat now america fire ants 
question. Dash in Brisbane. Uh, do you know what is Brisbane? It's an Australian city. So dash in Brisbane. It means a location in Brisbane. So the clue word is Brisbane, right? And by the way, dash in Brisbane. They might say it is found in a forest in Brisbane. So just listen for the word found in and answer may come before Brisbane or after Brisbane, right? For example, Brisbane and these fire ants are found in the forests there. Referencing for Brisbane, they use the word <coughs> there. Okay, now let's see. Question number 33, please. A much less cuddly example of a pest introduced to Australia, this time from America, is fire ants. These are increasing and spreading very fast. Their huge nests can now be found in gardens in the city of Brisbane, and they are costing the Australian government a great deal of money in control measures. In gardens in the city of? And some people write city in Brisbane. No, city of Brisbane. So answer is gardens. <coughs> now, whether you write garden or gardens, your answer will be correct. Why? Because there is no verb after that. Okay. Question number 34. Australia. Right? And then 34 is name. And by the way, this is the name of the exotic pests. So first they said red backed spider. Then they said rabbit. And uh, one thing more. When you're doing this table completion, sometimes what is written right above or right below, it can help you. Now, what is written right above 34? Fire ants, it's a sort of species of insects, right? So it means answer is going to be an animal <coughs> or it can be any species of animals or uh, insects. Let's see what that is. As a biologist and conservationist, I have become increasingly concerned about these matters. Exotic invasions are irreversible <coughs> and deserve to be taken more seriously, even when they aren't particularly damaging. For example, something that is not necessarily a major disaster compared to other ecological experiments. In 1975, an Australian species of earthworm was deliberately introduced to the Northern Hemisphere in Scotland because they were bigger than the natives. Australian species of earthworm. That's right. Now, earthworm, you can write it as compound word, earth and worm together. If the word limit is one word only, then you must write earthworm together. And if the limit is no more than two words, then you can write earthworm as separate words, right? So the right answer is earthworm. How do you spell worm? W O or W A R M? Earthworm. <laughs> good. Very good. Okay. Let's go on. Then Scotland, and we have another question here in notes. Deliberately introduced. In order to improve, now underline the word improve. In order to improve something. So for improve, they can replace it and improve what? Okay, now imagine earthworms, they live in the mud. So what is it that they can improve? Let's see. Have you seen earthworms? Where do they live? They live in the garden. Where? In the mud or soil. So what is it that they can improve? Yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. A much more serious case, also in Scotland, as well as other countries, along with the latest victim, Iceland, is the New Zealand flatworm. This is a most unwelcome newcomer in the... Sorry. The aim was that they would be more effective than native species. But in fact, they don't do more for the soil condition than the smaller locals, which they displace. Soil condition, exactly. Improve and they don't do more for soil condition. Improve and don't do more, right? So uh, the right answer is soil condition or you can also write only soil. That is also right. Soil condition or soil. Okay, how do you spell soil? S-O-I-L, yes. Uh, I mean, because of spelling, if you misspell the word, your answer is wrong. Let's go on. Next, we've got question number 36. New Zealand, flatworm, and dash Europe. Dash Europe means part of Europe. East Europe, West Europe, North Europe, South Europe, and all that. Let's do it. A much more serious case, 
also in Scotland, as well as other countries, along with the latest victim, Iceland, is the New Zealand flatworm. This is a most unwelcome newcomer in these regions of northwest Europe. In these regions of northwest Europe. Very good. So you will write northwest Europe. Okay? Well done. Very good. Uh, question number 37. Accidental introduction inside in... Uh, yeah. Accidental introduction inside imported dash... Now, whatever they say after imported, and for imported, they might reword it. For example, imported goods, goods that come from other countries. Imported bottle, bottle that is made in another country, like that, okay? So let's see what do they say. Basically, this flatworm came into these countries by accident. It's now been realised that it was actually carried in the plant pots containing exotic ornamental shrubs and so on, and as it eats local earthworms and doesn't benefit the local ecology in any way, it is a real pest. No. I'll play it again. You missed it. Actually, you missed it. Sometimes you, what happens, you miss the answer part, and again you are pay, paying attention, but that answer is gone. Listen again. Basically... This flatworm came into these countries by accident. It's now been realised that it was actually carried in the plant pots containing exotic ornamental shrubs and... Exotic ornamental shrubs, it was carrying in plant pots. So, imported in plant pots. I play this again. Plant pot means gamla. Basically, this flatworm came into these countries by accident. It's now been realised that it was actually carried in the plant pots containing exotic ornamental shrubs and so on, and as it eats local... OK. Now, question number 38. Japan, it's going to be another exotic pest. So the answer is going to be exotic pest, like flatworm and budgerigar. So let's see what that is. Next, there's a further instance, this time in the water. And it's come from Japan. It's a delicious but very fast-spreading seaweed. It's a delicious but very fast-spreading seaweed. How do you spell weed? W -E, e D. And write it down as one word, or you can write it as two words also, but seaweed is one word. Seaweed. Is this clear or shall I play it again? Okay, I'll just play it for some more. Next, there's a further instance, this time in the water. And it's come from Japan. It's a delicious but very fast-spreading seaweed and is one of many exotic species, large and small, in the seas covering... Okay, now after that, by the way, you don't need to read the other parts. Directly, you can come to Australia. Put your index finger at Australia and now you're waiting. Bajrigar. Have you seen, we call them Australian parrots. In the houses, small, colorful. Actually, their name is Bajrigar. We call them Australian parrots, but they are not Australian parrots. Australian parrots are big. Downstairs, have you seen that? That parrot is Australian parrot. But Bajrigar is small parrot. So, urban areas of southeast. Very simple. Before that, you found northwest Europe. Now they say southeast and there is going to be the region or country. Answer is going to be region and region can be city, country or continent. Right? So let's see what that is. Southeast and whatever they say after or before southeast, that will be your answer. We might take as an example a native of Australia, the budgerigar, the most common pet parrot in the world, of course. Because there have been many escapes over the years, it is now to be found flying about in feral flocks where the climate suits it. So, these flocks of budgerigars have been getting very numerous in the southeast of the United States, particularly in residential areas. In southeast of United States, particularly in... Now, some will write residential areas. That is not the right answer. Southeast United States. So the answer is going to be Southeast USA or you can write Southeast United States. United States or USA. Both are correct. Okay, question number 40. Smaller flocks. Flock means a group of birds. That is called flock. Smaller flocks because of arrival of dash. Okay, arrival. 
of something in recent years. Now their flocks are smaller because of the arrival of something in recent years. So for arrival, they might use the word have arrived or anything like that. People have been getting quite worried about this, but it has been observed that the size of the flocks has diminished somewhat recently. The fact that they are smaller is thought to be due to the fact that new competitors for their habitat have arrived from other places. New competitors have arrived from other places. I'm playing it again. And by the way, for because of the use due to the fact, new competitors have arrived. <coughs> what are competitors? Other birds, right? Yeah, competitors. Listen again. People have been getting quite worried about this, but it has been observed that the size of the flocks has diminished somewhat recently. The fact that they are smaller is thought to be due to the fact that new competitors for their habitat have arrived from other places. Okay, new competitors. Now, if you have the wrong spelling of competitors, your answer is wrong. And never try to get your answer right by asking someone, by looking around. I mean, just one question can cancel all the test. Okay, now listen, the last thing before we finish, that is whenever you practice IELTS listening, just focus the language on the question booklet and the language of the audio, what type of synonyms they use. And if you focus this after solving 5 to 10 tests, you will clearly understand the psyche of IELTS examiner, the person who makes the test. You will understand that if they use this language, this word in the audio, I have to focus this. If they use this word, I have to focus this. So never take IELTS tests blindly. Blindly means anneva. Ek test kiya, phir dusra, phir tisra, phir chota. Frustration ho rahi hai. First test, 20 answers correct. Second test, 18 answers correct. Third test, fourth. Don't waste the tests. Because in IELTS, we have limited resources. How many books do we have of Cambridge? 16. And four tests in each book. How many tests in total? 64. 64 tests. So if you take two tests a day, you have resources for 32 days only. So don't waste the tests. Take one test, put your mobile away, then take the same test again. We call it debriefing session with your mistakes. And when you are doing debriefing, focus the language of the questions and the language of the audio. Once you match these two things accurately, you will be able to get more than your desired band, inshallah. Right? Okay, thank you.